Hello my lovely little weasels, as my long-awaited turn from my sickness, I will be making a top 10 primaries for 2024. Because it has been a new year, I've been revisiting a lot of the old weapons in Warframe and some of the new ones as well, and I compiled a top 10 list, of course, with honorable mentions. The number 10 is not worse than number 1. I know people are gonna say it in the comments still, but it's, it's worth a shot, you know, I might say it, someone might hear it. Uh, but yes, number 1 is not better than number 10 they're all just amazing weapons for steel path and that is basically it without any more dilly dallying let's quickly get into the number 10 weapon on the list and at the number 10 spot, we have the Burst On in Incarnan. Ever since the introduction of these new Incarnan adapters for older weapons, these older weapons have been turning into monsters in Warframe. This Incarnan adapter allowing the Burst In to basically become a machine gun that mows down everything in Warframe. I have featured this weapon recently with my hero build, and this weapon just shreds through enemies. It does have a small little like, AoE explosion, but nothing too incredible so it's not going to be blowing everything out of the water but it is incredibly good at finding yourself inside of a corridor and just basically spraying and mowing it down because everything will be dead in a couple of seconds including acolytes of course every one of these weapons in this list is going to be capable of killing an acolyte so the burst on incarnate incredibly good and i do prefer use the uh, prime variant uh, if you didn't notice the mods and also the evolutions will be up on the screen when the weapon is talked about. So now we're gonna finish talking about the Burst on Incarnate and move on to the number 9 weapon on this list. And at number 9, we have the Sron Prime Incarnate. Yes, we're gonna have a couple of Incarnate weapons on this list. The Sron Incarnate Prime is basically turns from an automatic shotgun into a fully automatic sort of shotgun and blaster at the same time, doing explosive damage alongside the modded damage that you are, of course, seeing on screen. And uh, now it actually do have uh, what's called a ribbon for this weapon, and this even increases the damage even more of course the build is without the ribbon uh, and the gameplay as well but the ribbon turns this weapon just into a monster and compare these weapons with any warframe that I can actually do something and buff up their damage on like revenant uh, they're gonna be even better aoe weapons you can easily kill crowds of enemies with with this weapon and acolytes as well are pretty much just gonna be there for a second and then just instantaneously gone into a oblivion because it's going to get to one shot but also the number eight weapon can one shot enemies and that uh, we're going to be moving on to now and at number 8 we have a Teddy Tenant Archaplasmor. The Tenant Archaplasmor is a sister lich weapon and it's not going to be an incarnate weapon and this weapon is just extremely amazing. It fires a wall of plasma that gas punch through and also bounces around the walls. Basically a better variant of the Archaplasmor and it does incredible damage it's really really good this is actually the main weapon that i use inside of the index because it is amazing and actually killing corpus as well with the radiation damage and also your modded damage now compared to some maybe other shotguns in the game like the shining cornin and did for example the boring cornin this might not be the best weapon in the game but it still holds its own in 2024 it is an amazing weapon and it deals with enemies incredibly easily and especially if you have a warframe that buffs up your weapons this uh, weapon can become really, really good and very viable, especially in 2024. And the number 7 weapon on the list is very viable as well, and it is going to be... And at number 7, it is going to be the Excelsior Prime, the new kid on the block. Of course, the Excelsior is a good weapon as well, you can still utilize it, but the Excelsior Prime is better, it is bigger, and it is shinier, and also it does more damage and kills enemies much, much easier. This is one of my favorite run-and-gun weapons, especially when I'm doing relic runs or something like that, it is incredibly good. It is really useful against killing crowds of enemies, especially if you get out of that little because it launches grenades, or I guess little rockets, but they don't explode from a certain distance. I think it's around 
five or four meters, I'm not quite sure, but usually try to, I guess, basically fly above them and just bombard them with your rockets. It is a really good status applica applicator, especially with hunting munitions and also viral, which you have seen on the build. It is really, really good at killing enemies. The procs will kill alone a lot of enemies. And of course, it just looks really cool. And I think we all can agree on that. But moving on to number six. And at number 6 we have our oldest thin corn in primary, it is going to be the Fenmore. The Fenmore is an amazing single shot rifle in its base form and uh, killing enemies with headshots and dealing headshots is gonna charge up its thin corn form, turning it to, into another machine gun, sort of like the burst in, but it does have a sort of like a cooldown system. And this weapon is interesting in the fact that you actually don't mod for crit because of the 5th evolution, yes this weapon actually has 5 evolutions. And and on the fifth one, you actually have a 50% chance to do 2,000 damage on a non-critical hit. And that's what makes this weapon incredibly good. You can mow down enemies as in the same way that you can with the burst in. It's just in a different sort of way and you deal absorbent amounts of damage. This is one of the oldest and still one of the most useful weapons inside of uh, the game in 2024. And uh, moving on to number 5. And then number 5 we have a surprise entry, it is going to be the Trumna. The Trumna is an interesting weapon, you actually get it from Deimos and I do recommend you do. Uh, this weapon is incredibly good, it is an assault rifle that fires small little I guess heat waves and also I guess viral the amount of damage. Uh, and it is extremely good because then it charges up the grenade shot, the special shot with the middle mouse button, which basically can one-shot acolytes and just destroy a heap and just an amazing ton of enemies. And this weapon is sort of, in my opinion, the better Kuva Zor or Kuva Brahma. Uh, you do need a little bit of waiting time with the charge up, but when you get to the, the actual destruction part, it pretty much decimates rooms of enemies without any sort of issue. Now, uh, the only bad thing is, I don't think it's gonna be scaling well up to the, you know, level 2000 area, but it is a useful weapon for like someone that's gonna run Steel Path for 40 minutes. It is an incredibly good weapon and it can get rid of pretty much anything that it comes across. And moving on to number 4. At number 4 we have the Torrid in Kornin, the pretty much bar none best actual beam weapon in the game. Of course the base form is going to be a grenade launcher and this is very good because with this grenade you can hit enemies in any body part and it's going to charge up the Incarnate form which is very good and sort of the unique trait of one of these uh, Incarnate weapons and when you do charge it up it turns into a bean, a chaining weapon and you are gonna be killing everything. The damage that you're gonna be dealing with this weapon is incredible. When I say incredible, I mean best in game. This weapon can be paired pretty much with any Warframe, any build, anything. It is going to be killing enemies left, right and center. Amazing against Acolytes as well. Uh, I wouldn't honestly use it 99% of the time, but in that 1% it's gonna be the new normal enemies, but other than that, it is an amazing weapon that everyone, and I do mean everyone, should it definitely have. And moving on to number 3. So when number 3 we have the Latron in Corn, and yes it turns our beloved Latron, our single shot rifle, into a basically missile, a homing missile, bouncing missile, launching, uh, armor stripping balls. This is incredibly good in all situations. Uh, the amount of puncture damage that you're going to be doing is incredibly good because you're going to be basically every single puncture you're going to be reducing the enemy's armor by 20%. This is an amazing amazing weapon that I love using, for example with Hydroid Prime and with his new rework, and you're gonna be armor shipping for days and killing enemies without any issues, and you can have basically that AoE bouncing feature which is gonna be killing a lot more enemies passively as well, so keep that in mind. Nonetheless, the Latron incre incredibly good, I do use the Wraith variant, but there are really small differences, you can use whichever one you want for the people that have been asking. But moving on to number 2. 
At number two, we have the Phantasma. Maybe not the best beam weapon, but this weapon in and of its own can shred groups of enemies without any issues. This is one of the best weapons against the Normer, for example, that I love using if I'm using, for example, some builds against the Normer, but this weapon is incredibly good against everything. Now, the only downside of this weapon is that it's going to be not critical. It doesn't do critical damage. It's not a critical based build. Uh, and if it had critical chance that's just that tiny little bit with a for example help of Warframe or uh, any sort of any other help would turn this weapon an even better weapon. Now against Acolytes it is going to be pretty good not the best weapon against Acolytes but it is uh, still an amazing status applicator as well so you can utilize that feature if nothing else. But now we're going to be moving on to the honorable mentions of this video. In the honorable mentions we have a couple of weapons. I, I put the these weapons and honorable mentions because they're incredibly good it's just I don't want to make a top 15 or 13 it doesn't or I guess a 13 14 it doesn't make really sense but the born cornin is incredibly good I do recommend this weapon the fell orcs as well an incredibly good weapon the bonico the proboscis cernos is very good and we also have the paris and or dread in cornin both of them sort of being in the same group pile so both of those weapons are really good as well but that was the honorable mentions moving on to the number one position. And in the number one position, we are gonna have the Nautaruk. Yes, this bow always keeps popping up in my lists, and I do love this bow, and I cannot recommend it each and every year. The cool feature about this bow is, first of all, you get it for free for by completing the new war quest. It is amazing. It has infinite ammo. That is one of the cool features of it. The second one being there's three firing modes. Quick firing mode, which is basically when you accidentally tap and you don't want to do this one. Then you have charge shot, which is basically just a little bit char charged up, and then we have the perfect shot. Now, the perfect shot is something where it lands in the orange little field, and that is what you want because you have the best stats here, and then you can, of course, just basically overcharge it again, being it a charged shot. So... Basically, you have a couple of firing modes which are very good. You're trying to aim for the perfect shot. This weapon has infinite body punch through. This weapon is just really, really good at taking down rows and rows of enemies. If you like line this weapon up because it does have a small AoE as well, uh, it is going to be very efficient at killing enemies. And acolytes are pretty much not going to be an issue either. They're just going to be there and annoying you for a little bit. But that was the Gaming Weasel top 10 list for. 2024. Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave in the comment section down below what you liked and you didn't like. I will probably answer it uh, because, you know, I'm interested in seeing what you guys think. And uh, do leave a like, and subscribe for more content, more live streams and everything coming up. I'm getting better now. Yay. And uh, yeah, I love all you, I love you, and I'll see you guys on the next one. The Gaming Weasel, over and out.